Cyberbrainer is an online training platform designed to help individuals and teens learn the latest technologies and become certified professionals producing a comprehensive learning experience. So if you see over here, this particular business process step, which is assignment of a pay group, has two criteria. One is country has a pay group and another one is called as. Just clicked it accidentally. Yeah. So if you see over here, this one has two criteria. One is country has pay group, another one is assigned company. So it should be like. It is part of this country, has a pay group and the worker has a company attached to it. Only then this particular step is going to be triggered, which means it's an in criteria and not an or criteria. Please don't get confused with it. Lots of people get confused with whether it's going to be in or or in, and. So you just have to note that this is going to be a logical and criteria. So, which means both of these criteria should be fulfilled for this particular assignment and pay group to be triggered. If you see, I've added another step right now. So if you see step A2, I have two such steps called a step A2 and for the rest of them as well. There was already one step called as edit workday account. The order was A2. I have added another step, A2, which is for creation of a workday account. Both of them, the ordering, looks the same. So how is this going to get triggered in a real-life scenario? I'll just add another step over here for step B, because step B has no criteria at all. I will add another step, B right now for the same compensation hire, but instead of the comp partner, let me put it to comp admin. Let's see what happens there. Because this is another fund which you guys have to understand. Let me say proposed compensation. Just putting it as an action. All right. Instead of the comp partner, let me have somebody at a comp, some other person. Comp admin or somebody. Okay. I have not given any criteria right now. Okay. Come on. Now I want you to focus only on the step B. We have two step BS right now. Both of them are compensation, proposed compensation, higher. One is by the compensation partner. Another is going to be by the compensation admin. All right. So forget the label override also, and forget the due date also. What happens over here? What happens to these two steps? How does this get triggered? To give you a perspective, what ideally happens over here in proposed compensation hire is you are going to put the compensation relevant information of a person in the hire. That's what the proposed compensation hire does. In the hire business process, you are going to say that this particular person is going to be given a compensation of, say, X dollars. That's what is going to happen in proposed compensation hire. So this workflow? I am sure you would have seen some of these workflows during your activity in your post-class sessions. But what exactly does it do, or when does it get triggered, or how does it get triggered? One part is, both of them are going to get triggered. But how? When I say both of them are going to get triggered, how? Okay, let me tell you this. We call this as parallel step processing, 
which means both of these proposed compensation hires are going to get triggered at the same instant. So, if I go back to my BP definition, I have two steps, one with the comp partner, another with the comp admin. Both of them are going to get triggered at the same moment. So there will be two steps, one to the compensation partner, one to the compensation admin for action. And it is not either of them who is going to be actioning on this, but it should be both of them who need to action it before it goes across to the next step. So if I see an ordering over here is the same, what it means is these two steps are parallel steps. If you see over here, see here. It says actions that sub-process may lead to unexpected results if executed more than once. You lead that because we are having a parallel step over here. Workday puts in an alert, which is similar to this at all times. It's going to say that I have two steps over here which are the same and are also triggered, possibly at the same time. So ensure that they do not step on each other's toes. That is simply how we need to have it. And there could be a real-life scenario also when you want to have two steps triggered parallelly. For example, I could have a background check. For example, when you are going to be hired, you could have a background check. I might say that the background check for an education as well as a work ex need to happen at the same moment. I need to send across your background check to multiple vendors at the same instance, or I could have background check and reference checks. You know, any kind of hiring that you are going to have in any organization. You could have something like a background check. I could have background check and reference checks initiated at the same instance. Then I could say, background check, reference check. Both of them are going to go across to the candidate and say that, hey, provide all your information. We're going to initiate your background check and your reference checks. Clear on this funda about what a parallel processing is and any questions. You can also check this diagram as well, because this diagram is going to give you a simple flow chart of this is going to look like. So I can even show you the previous one. See for edit workday account. Both these steps are going to get triggered at the same moment. One for editing an account. If you have an account, it's going to get edited. Another. If you do not have an account, it's going to create a new account, but I'm going to be triggering both of these in parallel at this same instance. All right, we will see this now with a real example as well. What I'm going to do right now is I'm going to be correcting the errors for the higher simplified business process because it seems to have a multiple errors. I will correct it and we will trigger it for our business process or for our organization, Technology Consulting Any which is Carol Lee's supervisory organization. Then one important thing I just want to highlight over here next is going to be over here. We call here as complete step. So if you see, I think I discussed about all of this, except for complete step in this particular business process, I can mark only one step as my complete business process step, which means after this step is completed, the business process status is set to be completed, which means it is not necessary that I need to have my onboarding as the completion step. It is not necessary for me to have the onboarding as the completion step. I can even have my first step as completed. Where is the steps which are going to occur after? That could be more of notification or relevant steps. All right, any step which I'm going to say as the completion of my business process, I will call it as a completion step over here.
and again, it need not necessarily be the last step. It could be any of these steps. It could be any of these steps. I'm repeating it very, very clearly, it could be any of these steps, not necessarily the last step that I'm going to be having it. Clear on this completion step, and I'm going to be marking this at a completion step because over here, if you see, the error says some steps are out of order. Assign UK payroll must occur after the completion step, which is here. It is actually considering step H, which is the last step by default, as the completion step. Alright, so all that I'm going to be doing right now is assignment of a payroll. I'm going to be putting it over here as the completion step. I'm going to mark assign pay group as my completion step. Why I'm marking it as a completion step. You can just ask me also that. See, I need to ensure that, once this is completed, it means this particular business process is set to be completed. Whereas onboarding and onboarding steps, onboarding setup, can occur after the completion of my business process or those who are from an RDBMS kind of a concept. You might know what is a commit in a database. You might say what is a commit till completion. You're not going to have a commit triggered. So you can say that post a complete, a commit step is going to be done in an RDBMS terminology. That's the actual equivalent. And for the rest of the folks, when I say complete, that is when my data is going to get reflected in the back end for this particular process. My employee, ID, and all my employee. Relevant details are not going to be created till I say completed. And even if something is going to error out at that time, I can even roll it back or back out of that. So here I'm going to say assignment of my pay group as the completion step for that. What I need to do is I need not go to the relevant actions of the business process, but I'm going to go to the step, relevant actions. Say, I have like 8 steps over here or 7 steps over here. I'm going across to step E, the relevant actions for here. And then I go to the relevant actions over here and I click on business process and last but one over here I see set as complete. That's all I'm just going to say. This one is set as complete right now. Alright, another one change. I'm just going to make it in this particular business process because I do not want to trigger the proposed compensation multiple times. I'm going to say, I'm going to- Please do like, share and subscribe to our channel.